This is going to be the second part of our Wordle with Python, kind of a small series. So this one is going to be about implementing the logic, finding the letters that are inside the word, but not in the exact position. And we will also make our game nicer. It will look nice and like a playable game. And we will deal with some logic that we need to provide in. So we will have the game as much as alike, like it's in original version, like the way that we play it in the New York Times website. So it's going to be very interesting. Let's get started. Okay, so we said that we are going to continue from where we left off. We are going to continue writing some logic and also we are going to write the rules that are necessary in order to apply the Wordle rules games. Now, we're gonna get started by applying some nice customization to the terminal so we can really get the vibe of playing a game in a terminal, right? So I'm going to go to the Wordle in terminal directory. I'm going to go inside this nice msg.txt file and you can see that we have a variable equals to a triple quoted string that you can just go ahead and copy that. You can also see that it is really displaying Wordle with those hashtags here in between the semicolons. Okay, so I'm going to go to my PyCharm and I'm just going to straightforward paste this in just above the conditional here. And I'm going to say something like the following. I'm going to say print begin message like that. Now, if we bring in our terminal and try to test this out, then usually it is going to look a little bit weird if you don't play it on full screen. But I'm going to assume that if you want to play this game like and have the full experience, then it is probably better to maximize the window. So now we can totally see the word little text here, which is quite nice. Now, there is also the option of replacing the hashtags with some other text that will allow you to display the entire Wordle in a different color. If you want to deal with that, it will take a second. So you can go ahead and say from Wordle, import color like that. Or actually we have the Wordle library, so it doesn't really require. So I can just go ahead and say begin message dot replace. And I can just go ahead and say that replace all the hashtags with a formatted string where I will relate to wordle.color. Let's take yellow, and then I'm going to say that this should be yellow. So remember the color that we want, followed by the character that we want to display in the color, and then followed by the base color, right? This is the convention to do that. And now if we go ahead and try to test this out, I'm going to clean the screen, so we can see that we receive Wordle nicer than before. So this is a nice way that you can go ahead and just type in Wordle larger in your terminal. Okay, so now that we have done this, then it could also be nice if we could just clean up the screen before we start with the entire game, meaning clean the terminal screen. So I'm going to bring in import OS and I'm going to do a trick that I really like with the cleaning screen command. Now, if you use Windows, then it should be os.systemcls. But if you use Linux, then it should be os.systemclear. So since that is the case, and that's the main difference between the operating systems, we could go ahead and easily say something like os.systemcls if os.name is equal to nt. nt stands for new technology which is basically the latest name of the Windows kernel, so that's why it is going to be equal to NT. But if the Windows, or if your machine is not a Windows machine, then you can easily say OS.System clear like that. And that will work no matter if you use Windows or any Linux distribution. Test this out quickly, you can see that it cleaned the screen and then displayed the world. Okay, so that should be enough about customizing our game a bit. Now let's go ahead and continue with the logic of yellow letters. Now we said in the previous video that we are going to customize the yellow cases. This is the method that allowed us to apply the green cases. Now we want to do something similar with the yellows. So I'm going to go ahead and say apply yellows here. And I'm going to do something that might look like a code duplication with the apply greens. But there is a great reason that I'm separating those for loops now between the green and yellow cases. Because it is just going to make our code more readable 
rather than writing tons of else if statements in one method that applies all the colors. So I rather go ahead here and say for i and again just use the same logic like before underscore because maybe we will not use the character itself we will use the index only and I'm going to go ahead and say in enumerate self dot w charles and let's go inside our for loop here and let's only use the chosen character so we're going to go ahead and say guest character is equal to self dot w characters in index i of course okay so now that we have the guest character assigned to a variable then it totally makes sense to only check if this character exists in the chosen world if you remember we will scroll up a bit you can see that we have this variable here which decides what is the world that the game is looking for so i'm going to go ahead and say inside our for loop if guest character is inside the chosen world like that then we want to do something now we really want to be careful with this if conditional because we already might have letters that have been chosen as green letters meaning that the positional also fits the guest word so we want to handle this later on but currently if we find the guest character inside the chosen word then let's go ahead and take our actions now our action is going to be pretty equivalent to what we have done with the green case so it means that i can really allow myself to copy this line here and basically paste this in and only change this to yellow and you can see that this is throwing me some problems because the letter that I really want to make it colored is the guest character, right? So I'm going to change that and that should be it. Now also, if you remember from the previous episodes, once we color the character and assign it to a new variable, we'd also like to override the specific element in the wcharles list. So we should go ahead and say self.wcharles in i place in i index basically equals to color char like that so once we have this then we can easily go ahead and say here self dot apply yellows and then we could test this out if that's going to work now i already know that we are going to have some problems in cases where some letters are just going to be yellows but what will happen if some letter has two occurrences in the world for example let's go to our valid words list and look up for words that have two letters as the same letter for example this one here or a part which is a good candidate for that kind of word so we are having a lot of words in the game that some letters are showing more, more than once so we need to handle this somehow and that's going to be something that we will handle later in the game okay so now that we handled the yellow cases as well let's go ahead and test the behavior of that so i'm going to start our game and i'm basically going to let's let's pick up the cheat txt file just to, so we will have some hint about the world so i'm going to read the cheat.txt file this is the word that they are looking for so i can guess a word that starts with c but also somehow includes one of those in not the exact position so let's go ahead with clone this is a good word so I can go ahead and say clone and you can see that we have L-O-N in yellow and C as green. So that's good. That's a great start. Now I can say something like that, which is okay, which is not again showing me something which is good, not an existing word. Let's go ahead with Colin. Okay, so we receive green in all. Okay, so now we can totally understand our next problem. Now we need to implement the rules of the game, right? Because in this case, we should probably exit the game with some nice message that we won the game because we guessed the correct word. So let's go ahead and apply the basic rules that this game needs. And then later on, we will handle the different cases that we might face when we have green and yellow letters and so on. Okay, so I'm going to control C and clean the screen and continue from here. All right, so in our main.py file, it could have been nice if we could have some conditional here that will always jump the turn. And then once we reach the limit of the guesses that we might have, we will just quit the Python process, basically the game that we play. So this means that we might have separated methods here that might go ahead and check some stuff like 
let's simulate that. Those are not real methods, but before jumping the turn, actually, we could have some methods like check perfect guess, right? In case of perfect guess, then we want to get out from the game. Or guess dot check game loss, right? This means that user guessed six times and we should quit the game. By the way, I just noticed in the first episode that I used this variable of guesses count equals to seven. So this was my bad. We should fix this immediately to six and then handle that by referring to this variable in order to check how many guesses user guessed. Okay, so check perfect guess and check game loss. Those are methods that we can definitely go ahead and write right now. So I'm going to go here and say check perfect guess. And that's going to be easy. Basically, we are just going to check if self.wstr, which is the actual word, is equal to the chosen word. Then we can quit with a nice message. So I can go ahead here and say print. Let's use a formatted string and I can just go ahead and say congratulations. You beat Wordle in and then let's relate to the counter variable that we have, right? So it should be inside the class, which is guessword dot counter like that. Okay, so now once we print a message like this, then now we should get out from the game. Now we have two options. Basically, we could go ahead and use some break in here. But if we want to really apply the existence from the game inside the method, then we can use this little small trick here by importing the library that is called SYS and then basically call the exit method, which will get out from the Python process. So we can go ahead and say cys.exit and we could exit with a status code that is equal to one. But status code basically stands for the status of some program that has been executed. If the number is larger than one, then it indicates that there were no critical exceptions, no critical problems or something that is went wrong. So I'm just going to say cys.exit and then pass in here one. Okay, so we should do something similar about the loss of the game. So I can go ahead and say, what was the method name here? So we used check game loss. So I'm going to copy that, paste this in, and then I can go ahead and say if guess word dot counter is equal to guess guesses count. Now I'm going to use here plus one because we start from one, right? So we should be careful about this. So that's why I'm adding here one automatically. Now in the main.py, imagine a situation that we are in the latest iteration now. So this method has jumped our counter to six, right? So we don't want to use apply guesses and then throw out check game loss, right? Because if by this line, the counter will be six, then it means that once it will hit this one, then it will basically get out of the game, although we might guess the word right. So that's why I'm using plus one here. Okay, so in that case, we also want to print some message and then get out from the game. I can just go ahead and say something like you lost the game. And then I can say the word was and then relate to the chosen word. Okay, so we might have some problems because we wrote too much code without testing it. Let's go ahead and now test the functionality of the game. Now, in order to test this and really see the results throughout the way, I'm going to change the string that we display in each input here. I'm going to use a formatted string and I'm going to basically use, excuse me, I'm going to do square brackets and then use curly brackets inside of it and then relate to the variable of our counter. So it's going to be guess word or wordle dot guess word dot counter like that. And this will make much more sense because we will have an indication about how many guesses we have left. Okay, so now we can go ahead and try to play the game. Right? We can go ahead and say python main.py. You can see the counter here. Let's go ahead and use some six words to lose the game initially. Let's use place just all the time. 
Okay, so we have guest now one, two, three times. So this is our guest number four, guest number five, guest number six. Okay, so we see the seven, which is not good, but there is a way that we can avoid this. And I'm going to just go to the main.py and check out the order of the methods here. So we apply the guesses, we check for perfect guess, we check for game loss, and then we jump the turn. So it might be a better idea here to call the method of check game loss after the turn jumps, right? Because this should be the latest line, because if we tried to do everything, then we should lose the game, right? So that's why if we use jump turn before the check game loss, then our logic will work. Now, we should not really change the order of check perfect guess because once it is being called, then it already leaves the game. But in that case, it might be a better idea to, to just change the ordering here. And you can see that we lost in seven guesses. But next time, this is going to probably work. Let's try to play the game again. I'm just going to straight forward try to lose it. Okay, so six attempts and then we got out. So this is perfect. Okay, so this is the original Wordle game that I tried to guess the word from today and randomly played. But you can see that in the end of the game, we have some nice visualizations that we currently did not apply. Now, first things first, we see the guesses history, right? So we currently don't maintain anywhere the guesses that have been already provided by the user that plays the game. So this is going to be the first thing that we need to address. And the second thing, it is the fact that there is a nice area here that displays what letter you used and what letters are considered as green or yellow letters so you can see for example that i had this one guess here that it was considered as a yellow guess the s letter right but later on i found the positional of s so it turned on to be green so those things are things that we are going to address in order to complete and have the perfect game so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we said that we'd like to store somewhere all the guesses by the user and that is doable inside our Wordle Python file. We could go ahead to our class, we could basically have a list in our class scope and then we could add to it every time that we know that the user guessed something. Now, usually, it is a better idea to maybe display it only when someone wins the game because it's nice to have a summary of the game with the amount of guesses you provided and also your guesses along the way. Okay, so now, once we have this list here, then we can go ahead and easily, every time that the apply guesses method gets called, we could just add the value here inside this list. So if you remember, the post guess wstr attribute happens to be the attribute that stores the word right after the hints the greens or the yellows so you can go ahead and say word guess dot sorry guess word dot wordles dot append let's add self dot post guess wstr like that and once we have done this then i can go ahead and in only case of winning the game i can just print it right before we exit so I can go ahead and say for element in guessword.wordles, just print the element, right? And then after printing it, then we could sys.exit. Okay, so let's check if that's going to work for us. I'm going to go here to our terminal and I'm going to say python main.py and let's try to win the game and make us an easier life here. Let's go to the cheat.txt. That's the word that they are looking for. So let's start with something like grape first. You can see that it behaves well. Now I can say the actual word and you can see that it shows me this result, which is just all the hints. That's good. Congratulations, you beat Wordle in two guesses should be here. So I should fix this print line here. And you can see that those were my guesses along the way. Okay, so this is nice. So now I can clean the screen and continue. And actually, let's handle this print line that I forgot to add guesses. So, congratulations, you beat Wordle in guessword.counter guesses. Like that. 
Okay, so that's it about printing the guesses when we win the game. Now we want to jump on to the second part that we say that we should handle, which is the alphabets that we want to display here somehow. Now, when we play in the terminal, then it might be annoying always showing a list of characters in each time that user guesses. So I decided to come up with a logic that every time the user presses on the H letter, just a letter that I randomly picked because it reminds me the word of help, then we will display the status of the alphabet. We will display the correct colors in the correct positions as green colors. We will display the letters that are not exist in a red color. We will display the yellow guesses as a yellow. And if they are happen to turn to green guesses later on, then we will override those. Okay, so now that we understood our task, then we should figure out how we can maintain somehow all the letters in English alphabet. Now, I also thought about a library that might allow us to receive all the letters. But then I also realized that it is not that bad to have 25, 26 variables or key value pairs with all the letters. And let's just go ahead and do that straightforward. Now, what I'm going to do here is going inside the guess word class and then I'm just going to say that alphabet is equal to a dictionary and here we will have dictionary where the key will be the letter and the value will also be the letter. Now the reason that I'm doing this it is because throughout the game I can easily go ahead and do something like alphabet in key A is equal to color dot green plus a and then color dot base exactly like we need to do when we want to have colored characters maintained somewhere so this means that we should relate to all the values right when we want to display all the colored versions of the letters all right so within the code snippets repository you can find this alphabet.txt file which like we talked about we have a dictionary that includes all the letters so i'm just going to copy that and i'm going to take benefit from that and just paste this in right inside our wordle.py file and you can see that we need to replace those because this was just an example of course so I'm going to just paste this in like that. I can also minimize that so we will have a cleaner look in our entire file again. Okay, so now we need to figure out what are the cases that we want to edit the alphabet status, meaning all the values of the different letters here. Now let's simulate a game here in our notepad so that we will explain how our logic should be when we update the alphabet status. So let's say that this is the word that they are looking for, right? And we guessed clear. Now we know that L should be yellow, right? So let's mark it as yellow. And then we also know that C should be yellow. Now let's take a look for the rest of the letters here. Okay, so E should be yellow as well. Now imagine a situation that my next guess here was so i will jump here to next guess let's mark it as two and imagine a situation that what my next guess here was e raise all right now we know that e is again going to be yellow r is nothing is just going to be red so we need to take care of that because we also want to visualize letters that are not existing inside the world so r should be a different color right and a exist in the exact position now now previously i forgot to mark the a as a yellow as well so this is exactly the situation that we want to handle so a was yellow from here but when i write a word like erase then we should override the yellow to green right and speaking about s this should be as well in a red color so let me do that here quickly Right? And when we speak about E, now we know that this was yellow before, but this time it should be green. 
Now we should ignore that we actually used E twice because once a letter is found in the exact positional then in the original game it doesn't give hint about rest of the letters. And in fact I might be wrong here but usually when you play Wordle in New York Times it seems like they always choose those kinds of words that the letters are not repeated, so you will not see a word like erase there. Okay, so we know that we have a lot of cases that we need to handle, so let's go ahead and take care of that. Okay, so now back to our Wordle file here. Let's go ahead and write a method that will allow us to edit the key value pairs in the alphabet dictionary. So I'm gonna call this method edit alphabet. And this is going to receive two parameters because we want to pass in a key value pair. So I will do something like that. And then this will, those will be basically required values that you want to override. Now, basically, the only thing that we need to do here is guessword.alphabet in, in the key of k equals to v. But we have to validate some stuff before we can actually go ahead and execute this line here. Now I'm going to leave it as it is just for now, but later on this method here is going to change a lot because we will probably add some code that will validate stuff. Okay, so let's start easy with the greens. Now with the greens, it is just going to be something like self.edit alphabet. And then we know that we can choose the actual char or guest char because we are inside this if statement here. So we can actually go ahead and say actual char is the key that we want to modify and its value is going to be equal to color char. Okay, so now that we came up with this, it is about time to test if that's going to work for us. Now, the way that we can print the alphabet status is going to be a little bit tricky because it could have been nice if we could somehow print the entire letters in one line. Usually, when you iterate over a list of some iterables, then it shows you line after line, right? The each element is written in a separated line. So there's going to be a way that we can overcome this, which we are going to see in just a bit. Okay, so we said earlier that if we press on the letter of H, then it makes sense to show the alphabet status, kind of like help in most of the interactive terminals. Okay, so I will go ahead and say if guess.wstr and pay attention that I am doing this right under this instance here. This is important because the WSTR is assigned. And if that's going to be equal to H, then we want to do some actions, but we also want to continue, right? So here we will do some actions and continue will make sure to jump to the next iteration. So there is no chance that those lines of code will execute. And that's exactly what we want. All right, so here I can go ahead and say for element in guess sorry wordle dot guess word dot alphabet and we want to iterate over the values right because we said that those are what is going to really change throughout the game so we should be iterating over the values and now we can easily go ahead and say print now remember that i said a minute ago that if we will leave it as it is then we will see all the letters in separated lines and there's a great way that you can overcome this, which will be by easily saying end equals to something that is not equal to backslash n. Backslash n is the convention for separated line. So we can use space here to actually overcome this. So let's see the results of that. Okay, so starting to play our game here, you can see that in the first case, I use the H so that we will see the alphabet. Now you can notice that although it works, but it changed the behavior of the game a bit, which is not something that we like to leave it as it is because after the last element has been executed, then it also separated it by a space. So that's why our input is not in here, but it is there. So we should be checking if the iterated element is the last element of the list. And in that case, we just want to separate by a new line backslash n. Okay, so it is going to be pretty easy checking this out. So we can just leave end equals to space and we can use a one-liner if statement here. So I can go ahead and use if and then it is a better idea to maybe use list besides just using the values method which returns a tuple. So I'm going to go ahead and say that list 
underscore values is equal to a list and this will receive this entire statement here and now I'm just going to go ahead and change this so it will be more readable for us and then I'm going to go ahead and say list values in the minus one positional is not equal to the iterated element if we are not in the last element then let's separate by a space but if that's the case then let's go ahead and separate by a new line and that should do the trick for us okay so back in our terminal here let's go ahead and check out if that's going to work for us now if we say h so you can definitely see that it works well if we go back to our PyCharm here and check out the cheat.txt file this is the word that they are looking for so we can go ahead and use a word like dolls something like that and you can see that for d and the s i receive green so that is good now we really want to be careful and check if that's going to work throughout the game because we might also hit the green case in the next guesses so this means that the d letter for example will be green already twice so i'm afraid that there might be a situation that since we iterate here over the w underscore charles here in the wordle file we iterate over this here and as well as this and we also modify this list here when we want to assign a colored character so i'm afraid that once we try to edit the alphabet then it will actually try to add a new key value pair but the key will be the colored character so let's go ahead and see if that's really the case so i'm going to go here and say deals okay okay so you can see that we receive d and s as green again okay so you can see that it does not happen so this is good but we did not handle the yellow cases yet so now let's go ahead and start designing the yellow case so back to our pie charm we should be going to the apply yellows method and before we assign self.edit alphabet the way that we do in the green case then we should also validate one important thing so let me write the arguments here first and this should be colored character exactly like in here now the reason that we need to validate something it is because we don't want to change the alphabet status to yellow if the letter was already green this is not how the game behaves in original right so if we go quickly to the terminal here then if i was to guess a word like spoon then s here is yellow i'm fine with it but in the h this should remain the way it is right so we should be careful in general when we want to edit the status of some letter to yellow so back to our pie charm here so there is a way here that we can validate that the letter previously was not green and I can just use a variable here that I can name guest character is not green something like that so I can go ahead and say here that color dot green which is the convention string for green colors is not excuse me not in and this should be not inside the value of the guest character right so i can go ahead and relate to that dictionary of alphabet and i can just go ahead and say dot get get give me the value of this letter and just i'm going to provide here the guest character like that now if you remember i said that once we use the guest character guest character could bring us back in some situation colored letter so again like i said we need to be careful with this because we assign colored character to w underscore characters list okay so speaking about how to validate this then we already wrote here this boolean expression so only thing that we need to do now is to extend this if statement i should go ahead and say and guest character is not green only in that case i'd like to modify the character in alphabet status okay so let's go ahead and check if that's going to work for us so going back to the game here Control c restart the game so let's start with something like place okay so l and e once i say h then you can see that we see e and l now this is going to be good to see if those are going to be changed to green 
once I go ahead and try to guess the positional. So back to our PyCharm, cheat.txt, this is the word that they are looking for. So I'm gonna use melon, so it will be easy to identify. So I can go ahead and say this. Okay, so this is not a word they accept. This is weird because a pretty known fruit, but let's try some other word. Let's use something like devil. Okay, so you can see that we have an exception, which is great. So you can see that it says here type error, argument of type non-type is not iterable. And this comes from here, which I try to basically get the value of guess character. So I believe that what is going on here, when we try to get the value for the guess character, this is already a colored character. And that's why this is not really existing inside our dictionary. So we can actually go ahead and besides returning none when the key is not found, we can actually try to return back an empty string. And so that way we still will keep the condition here. So I'm going to go ahead and say inside the wordle file, I'm going to go here and I'm going to give here a default value once this entire statement here returns none. So just an empty string should do the trick here. So we can use the not in statement inside an empty string. Okay, so if we try to again play everything from scratch, let's use place. Okay, so A and C. If we say H, then this is behaving good. Now I'm going to say clear. Okay, so you can see that the behavior is as expected. We don't see yellow for the characters that are in the exact positional, which I believe this is the case in the original Wordle game. If I say H, then you can see that A and C are still greens, and that's something that I want to keep, and R is still yellow. Now, if we try to use a word like crown, okay, so we found the positional of R, then I can really go ahead and say H, okay, so it behaves very well, because now C, A, and R are greens, and that's good, because this one has been changed from yellow to green, and now the only case that we need to handle is the case that we modify the colors to red colors. Red basically is going to mark the colors that not even exist in the world that they are looking for. So let's go ahead and work on that. Okay, so now inside the apply yellows, we can only use the else here because we know that we don't have any case left. We cover the cases that we check for the characters that are inside the chosen world, but we also cover the cases that validates that the, the guest character, excuse me, was not green previously. So that's why I can allow myself to say just else, and then basically I could directly use self.edit alphabet, and then I could just provide in the necessary characters. So the key will be in that case guest character right and then the value will be just like this one here but besides yellow it should be red so i'm going to use this statement here but only change the color.yellow to color.red and i'm going to use colored character here okay so this should be enough let me actually bring back those so testing this once again then I can go ahead and get out from the game, python main.py, and now it would be great if we could initially see letter, letters that are just red. Okay, so P, L, E, C, and A. Okay, so what I was afraid previously happened right here. So you can see that we added some key value pairs that are in green colors. So this might just happen in one of the times that we iterate over the characters. So there's going to be an easy way to actually validate that no new key and value pairs will be added to a dictionary. We can easily go ahead to our PyCharm and we can just say here if K, meaning the given character, is not a value inside the keys of the dictionary, then we want to get out from this method, right? So I can go ahead and say if k not in guessword.alphabet.keys, if that's the case, then it means that one of the iterations are trying to add a new key value pair. So a new 
key value pair is being added and then we want to avoid this easily we can do this with return if we return from the function then this won't happen right and that's why I can just leave this line here because return will get out of the function and that's what we want okay so if we go back to the game then let's see if we have some more bugs to address here so python main.py if we again play with place h okay so this behaves well because none of the letters here are inside the word that they are looking for in this case the word was onion so we can go ahead and say olive which o and i behave as expected let's see what will happen with v right it should be red as well okay so v is behaving as expected too so and you can see rest of the letters are still red which is something that we like to see let's try to screw this up a bit so i will say a line so we will test i and n in the end so i can go ahead and see that okay so it behaves well let's see what will happen with the g okay so g is red and n is green and o is green which is something that we like because we said that we'd like to keep it okay so now let's try to cover the yellow cases let's say that i'm guessing something like mount okay so o is not in the position okay so this also behaves like expected because we said that when we identify a green letter then there is no point to mark it as yellow so we can go ahead and use h and you can see that now this is what, what I was afraid about because you can see that in case that we try to basically change from green to red, this is something that we really want to avoid because now it thinks that O does not exist here and that's happening because I try to basically modify the color in the apply yellows method. So this means that modifying key value pairs that their value are already red and green is something that we always want to avoid so that's why this could be something that could be also addressed in our edit alphabet method okay so i know that there are some problems in the game but that's what is cool about addressing those kinds of bugs are really challenging and fun to write the code that will make this work in the future so if we go back to the edit alphabet method then we know that in some iterations somehow we still might modify the letters to red now this means that the validations that will validate that the colors are red or green should be here in the edit alphabet. So I'm going to go ahead and run here some more validations. I'm going to go ahead and say here, do not modify key value pairs that are al already, excuse me, green or red. So I can go ahead here and say something like the following is for C in, and let's give those colors name, right? Let's call those colors persistent colors. So I can actually go ahead to my class color here and I can use something like persistent underscore colors and that will be equal to a new list which will use red and green. Right? Those are colors that we never want to modify throughout the game once they are colored in some case. So for C in color dot persistent colors, right? So now we should say here if C is inside the older value before modifying the key value pair. So let's use a variable for that, right? So I can go ahead and say older value that's going to be equal to the value that we want to bring from the alphabet dictionary right so we can say get k right because this is the key that is passed to that method and we know that if it does not exist here let's use this empty string for safety and i'm going to go down to inside the for loop and i'm going to say if c in older value then i want to do something right so I could actually go ahead and use a variable that is set to true from the first place. So I can say modify color is equal to true. But I know that if the C here is in older value, meaning that the older value is already red or green, then I want to prevent that. So in that case, it makes sense to turn on the modify color to false. And that's exactly like I am looking to do here. 
I'm looking to avoid changes of the dictionary in case that the value is already red or green. So now I'm using an indentation and I can easy, easily say here if modify color and close this out like that. Now we could also use return in that case like we did in here, but that's just another option to handle the case that we wanted to handle. Okay, so if we now go to the game, then now I believe that we covered all the cases. So python main.py place, okay, L and A. Okay, so behaves well. Let's use brave. So B is there. B is green and C, E, L, P, R, V. Okay, so it behaves perfect until now. Now we should be searching for words that are with B and in A in some location. So could be something like bikes maybe. I know that A does not exist here, but it helps me to test the rest of the cases of the game. Okay, so S exists and it is in that exact location. So S is green. Okay, so until now I could not identify any problems and we know that A is remaining yellow, which is good. And L is still there as a yellow, which is also good because we want to keep yellows if we never understood where the positionals of them should be. So we know that B and S are here and A and L should be in somewhere. So I could only think about balls, but this is not the case as well. Um, maybe balls like with W. Okay, so we won the game and it was a perfect guess. Now let's take a look if there are some lines of code that we could delete after the latest editions because we do have a lot of validations in this edit alphabet method now. So you can see that here we validate a new key edition and we also validate colors that are in persistent colors. So this means that anytime that the edit alphabet method is being called, then there is no point to validate that the character is green or red or something in that kind. So this totally means that I could get rid from this statement here because there is no point checking if the guest character is not green. We already do that here. So those are just waste of lines and whatever we could delete from our code is considered as the best. Okay, so now you could also go ahead and play with this if and else statement to see that you could do this more efficiently because you see that there are some lines that are quite similar that could be addressed better maybe from what it is right now. Okay, so once we deleted this one, then again, one final validation that the game behaves as expected. So we said world, H. Okay, so behaves perfect until now. We could use something like rocks and the R is still yellow. But you can see that we have the... R, yellow, O, C, K, and S are, all of those are marked as red, which is perfect. Okay, so let's just see a green case here. I'm not really going to complete the game. Let's use something like float. Okay, so L, O should remain red, A should be red, and T should be red, but let's see what will happen with the F. Okay, so it really behaves just as expected and it really seems like we don't have any bugs to solve here. So I believe that you have a great reason now. Chill off and try to play the game as much as times as you'd like to. And let me know in the comment section if you know that there are some areas of code that you think that could be addressed better than that. All right, so this will close out the video. Don't forget that you have the link to the GitHub repository if you want to take a look in the final code. This will be helpful if you want to compare your code to what is in the GitHub repository. Maybe you have some problems that you want to find out what the problem is, so it will be helpful. And also feel free to join our Discord server if you had any problems throughout this series. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and also consider subscribing to my channel. This will really help me to grow the channel and the video will come into a better place in YouTube search. So see you next time.